guys and welcome back to another video. As you can tell by the title, I'm going to be sharing with you just a few of my kind of things I've learned along the way of homeschooling with babies and kind of what works for our family. I know every family is different, so keep that in mind that what works for me and my kiddos and family may not work for you. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Before I actually get into the tips, I do want to mention as well that if you are going through the little years, um, like I am, I have a kindergartner, a preschooler, and then of course my eight month old, who you'll probably see here in a little bit, depending on when she needs mommy. <laughs> but if you are going through the little years as well, um, and if you have those homeschooling days as I do, you're probably going to have a couple of those days where you feel like you just want to give up, it's not worth it, it's too stressful. Um, I'm just here to encourage you and as always here to also encourage myself when I do these videos I'm also encouraging myself um, to continue to just honestly continue just to keep going and push through it even though it might be difficult and to also remember as I'm reminding myself here that those little years don't last um, they'll be over before you know it and to just cherish that time to continue to push through because they will be over. It's not a for it's not a forever thing. And to always remember, even on those long days, that it is just a phase. It is just a phase. And to enjoy that phase as much as possible, even though it can be very long. And as I mentioned before, you might not want to keep doing it, but keep doing it. It will be so worth it at the end of the day and at the end of the week and at the end of the month and at the end of the year and then that year will be done and yeah so cherish it if you can um and it'll be it'll be gone before you know it mamas anyway first tip i wanted to share with you <laughs> is to fill the cups of your little ones first and if you're like me and all your children are, are little you'll probably be like okay well which one do i fill <laughs> Um, but for me, I have a kindergartner, so I consider that like my actual student student. Um, and then my baby, I make sure that before I even start a lesson of the day, I make sure she is has been fed, she has a clean diaper, she's ready um, just to be kind of held, and so she's happy and content. And then I make sure that my three-year-old is also content and her cup is full. And what that looks like for her is just one-on-one -on -one time. So I make sure I either read a book with her, I do a puzzle with her, a game with just her one-on-one. -on -one. So her cup is full. She also loves playing dollhouse. So oftentimes that looks like with me, um, it's just 10 minutes before school, I will go and make sure it is just one-on-one -on -one time with me and her, fill her cup up with the love and tension that she needs and then where she is satisfied and happy with the attention that I've given her and then after all the cups are full I am then able to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with my kindergartner and start whether it be reading lesson um, and I say that because if the other two little girls if their cups are full if they're content and happy and ready to play then it makes it much much easier for me to be able to sit down without any distractions and actually do that reading lesson or math lesson or whatever it is needed for that day with my kindergartner it makes a world difference it really does because those little ones are not fighting for mama's attention because her cups are full makes a big difference the second tip I have would be to involve the little ones as much as you can and to keep them close as much as you can. Um, for me, <laughs> this is why honestly I keep the baby close to me a lot because that's when she's the most happy. And there's nothing more, I don't know if you can relate, but there's nothing more stressful to me personally as a mama than hearing the baby cry or um, being in the other room and they're crying. So for me, it's just easier to keep them close. It keeps my heart happy happy and content and it definitely keeps the baby happy and content um, that's just what works for our family so I do wear the baby a lot when we're doing schooling um, I have a Tula carrier it is one of the only carriers that does not hurt my back I can wear it for hours and it does not hurt my back so I love it um, I'll insert a picture here if I can find one um, but yes yeah, so I always keep the baby close and keeps them happy which then in turn keeps me happy and content knowing the baby's safe and happy and then I also try to involve my three-year-old as much as possible um, I have shared in previous like, videos that they're, um, my three-year-old and five-year-old really are only 21 months apart, so they do do a lot of things together already, um, but if I am needing on distracted time with my kindergartner for those 20 minutes of reading lessons or math lessons or something, <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, um, if I am needing that undistracted time with my kindergartner to get a lesson taught or a lesson done, 
I actually have a separate activity cabinet for her. If she is not either practicing scissor skills or gluing and cutting and just throwing things on her own, then I have an activity cabinet that's separate. I'll show you here in a little bit. I'll kind of walk you through what I have for her available, but there's just little games and activities so she knows that during school she can pull something out and she can either come sit at the table and do that with us or with mommy or things like that. But include them as much as possible even if their cups are already full, they might still want to be involved with the school lesson so it just has something available whether that be like I said the activities that I'll show you here in a minute that I like to use or busy bins or just something that helps them feel close and included to their mama. For number three if you do have a baby I would suggest scheduling time and this might not even be just a baby this might just be the youngest of your family every little person has their happy time of the day and they're not so happy time of the day I know you all get that if you're a mama and so one of the joys of homeschooling, and especially for me being in just the depths of the little years, um, everyone has their fussy time of day, and their tired time of the day, and their happy, thriving time of the day. And as homeschoolers, one of the joys of homeschooling is being flexible. You can work around that as much as possible. And what that looks like for our family, oh, did you drop it? Is that from eight to 10 in the morning, that's when the baby's the most happy. And then from like 11 to one, she's definitely ready for a nap, so that's her longest nap time. And then from like one to four is typically the other happy time of the day for her anyway. Um, and then the evening hours are very hit or miss whether or not she has a little nap, and I know you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but yeah, schedule that time around for when they are happy, that way it takes <laughs> It takes the stress out of actually teaching and learning. I do try to create an environment of learning all the time, an atmosphere of learning. So it doesn't matter what time of day it is or what we're doing. I do try to make sure that we have things readily available so if the kids are ready to learn, then we can learn. Um, but their actual school lessons, I do try to get done first thing in the morning when she's happy. And then that rest of the time, that next happy time of the day, we can just do the fun unit studies, um, the hands-on learning, the more of the on-schooling things that we try to provide for our children and things like that. So yeah, definitely work around the schedule for when your baby is the most happy and you'll find that when you are trying to learn when she is happy, it will make the day go much sweeter and happier. <laughs> Fourth thing I wanted to share, and this is only if you feel like you want to or are able to rest with your baby, and this is not just like actual sleeping. If you want to fall asleep with your baby, that is amazing. I admire all the mamas who can fall asleep during the day. I've never been one of those people. I don't know why. I just have always had a harder time taking a nap, actually falling asleep during the day. But I do like laying down with her in that afternoon, so typically... <laughs> Typically after lunch, I will go rest with her for about an hour, but so will all my other littles. So I'll have my five-year-old and my three-year-old and the baby will be asleep. But honestly, that is our hour of the day where we love, love, love to just like cuddle. And that is when I'll do read alouds. So I will rest when the baby rests, but so will everyone else. And we'll get out the books and we'll read. Um, but just use that time for when the baby is resting to where you might not have that downtime and everything like that. So for me, it is so comfy to just lay there in the bed. Sometimes I'll drink a cup of coffee um, and just cuddle with the babies. The baby's asleep anyway, so we might as well cherish that time and enjoy that time while the baby's asleep to do the read alouds and to do the more peaceful kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, interactions with the kiddos. But yeah, that has really helped and the kiddos really, really look forward to that time of the day. The last thing I did want to share with you, and this is honestly kind of like all the tips tied together in one, but the last thing, actual separate thing I wanted to share with you is to honestly be flexible. Um, that's a lesson that I've had to learn and that I've kind of fought against. But being flexible is the key to having that peaceful home, that peaceful environment. Um, the attitude that says, you know, whatever does happen or doesn't happen today is okay. And having that attitude and mindset has been powerful. It's been a powerful change um, in our daily, like day-to-day -day life. And that attitude is saying, you know what, if this doesn't get done today, that's fine. If it does, praise the Lord. But if not, I'm not going to stress out about it and things like that. And that was a hard thing for me to overcome because I was definitely a scheduler. And I liked having that schedule and knowing what was going on. Um, but now I've learned that we honestly just thrive off a of routine. The kids like to know kind of what is next, but not necessarily like the hour by hour play by play, if that makes sense. But yeah, being flexible has definitely helped our days run much smoother. 
um, and realizing that it is okay, it is 100% okay to not do school for the day if mama needs a mental break. Um, it is okay to be flexible by saying, okay, we're actually just gonna take the whole week off and because mommy is like, it's a struggle and I'd much rather have, or I'd much rather be a happy mama for my babies instead of a stressed out mom. So I've learned that sometimes staying to that rigid like um, school book schedule can make me kind of stressed out if I really need a break. And if I learn, if I didn't listen to myself or listen to my body, then I'd be stressed out even more. Um, but realizing when you need a break and taking that is huge. So being flexible based on how you're feeling, on how your family's feeling. Um, you mamas are the thermometer, the thermostat to your home. You really are, and how you feel, how you act really does set that temperature for your home. So really being flexible really, <laughs> really helps that. It really, really does. It's amazing. It's a game changer for sure and a life changer when you can actually learn to be more flexible and you can enjoy and be more spontaneous and live in the moment. But yes. Um, yeah. Well, guys, thank you again for watching today's video. I hope it did encourage you or help you in some way, even a small way. I think we're ready to go take a nap, right, and get some lunch. But yeah, thank you guys again for being here. And as always, I'd love to have you join our family. And you can do so by subscribing below. We will see you in our next video. Bye, guys.